Hi everyone, today I'm in London and I'm going to give you five basic transitions for beginners that can get you started to making your footage step up a notch and a simple edit that will bring them together seamlessly so you can really get the best out of your transitions, just like this one. The lens cover transition. This is a pretty simple one, usually you'll see someone use their hand for this to cover the lens and then uncover, but for this I want to show you how you can actually get yourself into a varied way of doing this. So for here I'm walking up to the lens, making sure it's really dark, pretty much pitch black, and then we're going to go to our second location. In the second location you're going to back up into the lens, I'm using my rucksack here, which is black anyway so that helps, and then you're going to come and walk away from the lens, so it looks like you've travelled into a second place. So it doesn't need to be it's something black that goes into it at all, you just have to make sure you get close enough that it covers up the lens completely. Just like that. Nice seamless transition. Now remember with the lens cover transitions you can really vary those transition shots. So you don't just have to have you know someone covering up with a hand and then coming back again. You can make sure that you're using something like a door opening and closing to different locations that kind of thing. Maybe you're stepping over the lens and then away into a different location. Really think about how you can vary this because whilst these transitions are basic, there's a huge amount you can do with them to improve your videos and filmmaking. Next up is a match cut. Now a match cut is where you frame yourself in one way but you change the location each time. So I've centralised myself, you can do this with someone who's walking and all that kind of thing with different movements. As you can see here, we can just change the location and make something really cool. Also we can do a match cut but instead of doing it with just the same uh, positioning we can do this in a leading lines fashion. So leading lines is when you're using something to your right and your left to guide you into one direction. So here we can see me bumbling down the corridor. I should use my gimbal for this um, but you know it might look a bit drunk but it still works and you'll still get the idea. So you're going to match the same kind of travelling with something to your left and right tunnelling you towards a direction and it makes a really nice series of cuts. Now remember when it comes to match cuts you want to make sure that if you're filming a person that they are in the same position every single time for each of your match cut shots. So for example like I have in the examples if I'm centralised like this then you want to have that person centralised in all of those match cut shots. Same as if they're side on but in a profile kind of way and also if you've got a location like I showed you with leading lines make sure that's the same in every shot. If you vary them a bit too much it's going to look a little bit messy so make sure you match every aspect that you can of your framing. Next up is the sky transition. Now this is a really cool transition to do, it works really really well particularly if you've got nice blue skies above you so you get your focus where you want it, line that up and then swing it up into the skies so it's nice and blue by the end of that shot. So as you can see here, got the focus nice and well in there and then I'm going to get that camera and swing it up into the sky. Now what you do after that is once you're in the sky, you match that by starting in the blue sky and coming down into a second location. And you can do that again and again and again. Now something else you can do with this as well as using this for blue skies, you can use this with grey clouds and stuff like that. On this occasion I use a grey clouds to actually do the transition. But actually the overexposure worked in my favour this time, so when I actually went up to the skies I had an ND that was strong but not strong enough for the light that was there and I used that to cover the transition and the cut in between the shots. And you can use the nice light flares as well to help you bring you in somewhere completely different if you want to. Next up is the screen wipe transition, so we've used our cells, we've used the skies, now we're going to use objects that are around us and our environments to block off the camera lens and then swipe us into the next location. Now a lot of time people use keyframing in post production but I want to keep this really really simple so this is stuff that you can do just with a simple cut and in the camera work. So you can see here we're going to go to the right and in that blackness from that pillar is where we're going to cut and we're going to use that to cut into a new location in the same way. Just like this into a different location completely. Now whilst this works really really well if you can find railings this is a really really good object to use because you've got different gaps and you can go one after another after another and then surprise the audience after the third or fourth time into a different location. So we're going to go in there pillar, pillar and then we go into a completely different location, pillar, different location again. So you can really rack these up and create something really special and something really unique. Now in different locations here I want to let you know that if you're going to the right don't then swing to the left, it looks a little bit weird. So if you're going to the right and then bounce back to the left you can see it's a bit jarring for the audience so avoid that where possible. Now with pan wipe transitions you want to make sure you get the smoothest shots possible as you're going across the objects that you're using to black out your lens for the transition. So if you're in one particular place where you're just going across a couple of bars like I was today in this video, just plant yourself nice and steady and use your arms as almost like a gimbal. 
if you're going for a lot of bars in a row, a long distance in a row, you may want to use a gimbal instead, like I forgot for my match cut transitions through the leading lines. If you're going for quite complicated and far out transitions, something like a gimbal will really help you out. Next up is going to be the whip pan transition. So here you're going to turn your body to the left and you're going to swing it to your location that you want in focus. So this is a really, really fun transition and you're going to use motion blur from this to actually create the transition when you cut. So you can see there, you get a bit of blur into your location and then whip out again. And then you can go into a completely different location. This is great for comedies. You could use this for the drum, but I think it's probably more comedy based or you know travel vlog style, that kind of thing. And here you can see with the clips, this is how I did it in editing. I've got the first clip here and if we scrub through it, that's where I have the most blur on this clip. So we're going to scroll this little um, clip, trim that down where it's got the nice blur and then we're getting our second clip and we want to start the second clip with the blur so we can match the blurs together. So we're just going to swing that, get a bit more blur if we stop here and then we've got our nice blurring mix. We're going to match those up and you're going to get the blur into blur into the next location so it'll be seamless. So if we hit the play button, scrub through, you can see that transition is absolutely seamless and it looks really, really cool. Really easy transition, something anyone can do. You can do this now, just head outside your house and practice. Really, really easy transition you can do anywhere, anytime. And the weirder the subject that you're filming, the better. And you can whip pan out of that into somewhere completely different and really take your audience by surprise and into a new location. Two big tips for whip pan transitions is the first one, when you turn to your left, make sure you turn at least 90 degrees. That way you've got a nice distance to swing in to your location that you want in focus. That way you've got enough blur to play with. If you just go from here to here rather than here to here, you haven't got much room to get that blur. You might not have enough blur and you end up wasting the shot. So make sure you go from 90 degrees into your location. The second tip is to make sure that when you whip into your location, that you then hold it for as long as you need and then whip out. That way you've got two options. So you can whip into that location or in the editing, if you decide you want to whip out into another location, you've got that option as well. So this one I'm calling the drop down, although this could be a slide down, a tilt down, you might want to call it. But basically what you do is you put your camera right up against the beam here or whatever your branch pole, or anything that you've got is going to be for your blocking of the lens and then just bring that lens down and reveal location that way. And what you can do with this is reveal another location as well if you start above that pillar or above an object and you can reveal things in a really exciting way. So if we then put ourselves above a ledge, for example, and then we just slowly drop down, fade into darkness and then come out into somewhere completely different. Another transition that's really, really simple and easy to do that can actually wow a lot of people. And believe me, this has wow people that I showed and you can really create something quite unique and interesting. With the top down transitions, make sure that you're cutting right when the lens is black. Same with the other transitions where you're going through objects. You wanna make sure you cut as soon as it's black and then start when the lens is black before going down or up if you wanna go that way into a new location. So guys, let me know what your favorite tip was from this video about basic transitions for beginners and I hope you've enjoyed this and learned a lot. If you wanna learn about Film It Pro, which is the app that I use to film my films and all my YouTube videos, then there'll be a playlist for all my tutorials on Film It Pro right here. It's a pretty comprehensive list and there'll be a video that YouTube is gonna to cater to your needs right here. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one, bye bye.